Hi guys, welcome to this revision summary video for everything that you need to know on the calculations if you're doing the higher GCSE paper. The first thing we're going to do then is we're going to have a look at all the different calculations that you can come across from this part of the topic. So, the calculations you need to know. Relative formula mass. Empirical formula. So you need to be able to work out the ratios, you need to be able to work out the complex calculations, and you need to be able to work out the investigation. Conservation of mass. So what is conservation of mass? And how can you work out the maximum mass when you're given the masses of reactants or products? Moles and particles. How can you work out the moles? And from that, how can you work out the particles using Avogadro's constant? Concentration. So how can you convert centimetres cubed into decimetres cubed? And how can you work out the concentration in grams per decimeter cubed? And then for the higher paper, limiting reactants and stoichiometry. We're going to start off with the easy one, which is relative formula mass. So, nice and simply, the relative formula mass, all you have to do is add up the atomic masses. The atomic masses, remember, they are the big number on your periodic table. Now, the best way to go through this is to have a look at some practice examples. So, I've got four questions here for you. Now, the first thing you'll notice is it always tells you the atomic masses in these questions. So you don't need to find them on your periodic table. The second thing, the key trigger you're looking for here, is relative formula mass. The second you see that, add the atomic masses together. So if we have a go at carbon dioxide, CO2, you can see there's only one carbon here. Therefore, I have 1 times by my mass of carbon, which is 12, which is 12. Oxygen, however, I've got two of them. You can see that from this little number down at the bottom. So whatever I do, I times by 2. So I've got two oxygens, which is 2 times by atomic mass of 16, which comes to 32. Then, as I said, add them together. So 12 plus 32 gives you 44, and that will get you your mark in the exam. Number two, again, there's a lot of information here, but the key thing is work out the relative formula mass of calcium chloride. Calcium, we've got one of. So 1 times 40 is 40. Chlorine, I've got two of them, therefore 2 times 35.5, which is 71, add those together, I get 111. Number three, again, relative formula mass, it tells you in the question, there's your trigger, FeCl3. So Fe, you've got one, and that's one times 56, and then chlorine, you've got three, which is three times 35.5, which comes out to 106.5. So add both of those together and you get 162.5. And then final one in this section, again, it tells you relative formula mass. The second you see that, add it together. You've got a more difficult one here of aluminium sulfate. Key thing, if you see a bracket, work out what's inside the bracket and then multiply it by outside. So if we use this as an example, Aluminium, I've got two of. That's nothing to do with the bracket, so that's just 2 times 27, which is 54. Then let's have a look inside the bracket. So inside the bracket, I've got one sulfur. Therefore, I've got 1 times 32. I've got four oxygens, so 4 times 16, which comes to 64. So if I add them together, it gives me 96. But I've got that 3. So what I have to do is I have to take that 96 and I have to now multiply it by 3. So that comes to 288. So my mass of my sulfates in there is 288. Now I've got to add my aluminiums back on. So 54 plus 288 comes to 342 to get your mark. The next section we're going to have a look at is the empirical formula. Now, as I said, there are three sections to this. The first one we're going to focus on is how you can work out the ratios. So, the definition for the empirical formula is the simplest ratio of atoms. So, for example, if I have C6H12O6, what you need to do is you need to find the number, the biggest number that all three of those can divide into. And here, you can divide all of them by 6. So, if you do that, 6 divided by 6 is 1, 12 divided by 6 is 2, and 6 divided by 6 is 1. So my formula is CH2O. Another example, C3H9. Both of them can be divided by 3. 
So 3 divided by 3 is 1. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So I have CH3. And then finally, both of them can be divided by 4. So 8 divided by 4 is 2. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Therefore, I have Fe2O3. The key thing here is this will only be worth one mark. It becomes a lot more complicated, which is what we're going to move on to now. So, the complex calculations then. Let's have a look at a worked example. So this question here says, an oxide of lead was analysed. 0.414 grams of lead was combined with 0.064 grams of oxygen. Calculate the empirical formula. So straight away you can see this is worth more marks, therefore you've got to do a calculation. So the first thing you need to do if you get a question that asks for the empirical formula is divide the mass by the atomic mass. So it tells you the mass in the question and the atomic mass it gives you underneath. So for lead it's 0.414 divided by 207 which comes out to 0.002 and for oxygen you've got 0.064 divided by 16, which comes out to 0.004. That's going to get you one mark in the exam. The second one is to divide each of those numbers you've just worked out by the smallest number. That's going to give you your ratio of atoms. So my smallest number here is 0.002, so I divide both of those by that. 0.002 divided by 0.002 is 1 and 0.004 divided by 0.002 is 2. Therefore, I now need to put this back into my actual elements. I've got 1 Pb, I've got 2 oxygens, so my formula is PbO2. The third part of the empirical formula section is to have a look at how you can investigate the empirical formula. So you might get a question very similar to this which says an experiment is carried out to determine the empirical formula of magnesium oxide by reacting magnesium with oxygen. And it then says describe an experiment to produce these results. So what you have to do then is list off a few steps of how you can do it. So the first thing, you want to measure the mass of your crucible and your lid. That's this thing up here. Once you've done that, you need to measure the mass of your magnesium and then add the magnesium to the crucible and heat strongly. So when you do that, the magnesium will start to react and it will turn into your magnesium oxide. During the reaction, lift the lid so it replenishes the oxygen, adds it back in, otherwise it will not finish the reaction and you won't get good enough results. So when it's fully reacted and turned into white powder, you need to remeasure the mass of the magnesium oxide crucible and lid, and then take away that mass that you measured out in step one, so subtract the mass of the crucible and lid, and that tells you the mass of your magnesium oxide. So those are the six steps. The next section of the video is going to have a look at conservation of mass. So you need to be able to tell me what conservation of mass is and then work out the maximum mass in calculations. If we start off with the definition then, nice and simply, the mass that you put into a reaction is always the mass that you get out. So the reactant equals the products. So for example, if I have hydrogen and react it with oxygen to make water, and I put 4 grams of hydrogen in and react it with 32 grams of oxygen, in total my mass of my reactants is 36 grams. Therefore my mass of my products must be 36 grams. So it doesn't matter what chemicals you're using, the mass in is the same as the mass out. However, you might need to be able to do a full-on calculation on this. They might only give you one of the values and say, you've got four grams of hydrogen, for example, how much water will you get? So for example, let's have a look at a question. We have the Solvay process here, which is 2NaCl plus CaCO3 goes to Na2CO3 plus CaCl2. And it says, calculate the maximum mass of sodium carbonate that could be formed. So that is the thing that you want. So the first thing you do is work out the relative formula mass. Now, a really good habit to get into is the second you see relative atomic masses and chemicals in there, work out the relative formula mass. That's going to get you a mark. So let's start off with sodium carbonate. I've got two sodiums. That's 2 times 23, which is 46. One carbon, 1 times 12 is 12. And three oxygens, 3 times 16 is 48. Add that all together, I get 106. 
And then calcium carbonate, that's the thing that we have. So CaCO3, one calcium, one times 40, one carbon, one times 12, and three oxygens, three times 16, which is 48. So that gives me 100. So once we've got the relative formula mass, the next step is to divide the formula mass of the thing that you need, and the thing that we need is sodium carbonate, by the thing that we have, which is the 40 kilograms of calcium carbonate. So we take the relative formula mass of those, it's 106 divided by 100, which gives me 1.06. That's my ratio, so that gets me my second mark. And then all I have to do for my third step is take whatever that number is and times it by the mass in grams or kilograms or tons, which in this case is 40 kilograms. So 1.06 times by 40 gives me 42.4 kilograms for my third mark. The next calculation you need to be able to work out is concentration in grams per decimeter cubed. Now it doesn't matter if you see it grams decimeter minus three or grams divided by decimeter cubed, it's the same thing. All you have to do is to be able to manipulate this triangle where mass is in grams, volume is in decimeter cubed and concentration is grams per decimeter cubed. So if you want to work out the concentration, nice and simply, you need the mass and you divide it by the volume. However, sometimes they'll give you the question in centimetres cubed, so you've got to convert it into decimetres cubed first. And to do that, you divide by a thousand. So for example, 22 grams of sodium chloride is dissolved into 650 centimetres cubed of water. What is the concentration in grams per decimetre cubed? So, marking point one is to convert the volume. We've got 650 centimetres cubed, we need to convert it, so we divide by a thousand, which gives me 0.65 decimetres cubed. And then once I've got that, all I need to do is mass divided by volume. My mass it told me in the question was 22. So 22 divided by 0.65, which comes out to 33.84615 grams per decimetre cubed. Now normally it's a good idea to round to two decimal places, but sometimes you might see something saying, write your answer to three significant figures. So work out what three significant figures is, find your first value, go three figures beyond that, and then round up. So here I've got 33.8 grams per decimeter cubed to three significant figures. The next part is moles, mass, MR and particles. So how can you calculate moles and with that how can you calculate the number of particles in a reaction? And it's all to do with one equation which is moles, mass and MR. Mass is usually in grams, the MR is your relative formula mass which we talked about earlier and your moles, if you have one mole you have 6020000000000 you have a lot of particles in particular, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. That's Avogadro's constant. So what you need to be able to do is have a look at certain questions and work out how you do it. So let's look at the first one, which says calculate the number of moles of aluminium carbonate, Al2CO3-3, in 117 grams. Now again, you've got atomic masses here. You can work out the relative formula mass. That's the easy marks in this question. So we have two aluminiums, two times 27, which comes to 54. If we look inside the bracket, I've got one carbon, so that's 12. I've got three oxygens, which is three times 16, which is 48. So inside the bracket, I have an atomic mass or formula mass of 60, but I've got three outside the bracket. So what I need to do is I need to take that 60, times it by three, and that gives me 180. I can then add my aluminium to my carbonate, that gives me 234 overall for my relative formula mass. Now I need to work out my moles. As you can see from the triangle on the left, it's mass divided by relative formula mass. The mass it tells us in the question, which is 117 grams. The relative formula mass we have just worked out, which is 234. So 117 divided by 234 is 0.5 moles. Now, there could quite easily be an extra part to this question that says calculate the number of particles using the moles calculated in part one. 
And as I said earlier, you take the number of moles and you times it by Avogadro's constant, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And that comes out to 3.01 times 10 to the 23. If we have a look at another example, this time they might not even ask for the moles, they'll just turn around and say how many particles of sodium carbonate are present from 64 grams. Again, you've got atomic masses, work out the formula mass. Two sodiums, two times 23. One carbon, 12. Three oxygens, 48. Add them all together, you get 106. One mark for that. Then the moles is mass divided by MR, Mass is 64 grams, tells you that in the question. Divide that by your MR, your formula mass we just worked out, that's 106. That comes to 0 0.603 moles. And then all that's left is to times that number by 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Put that into your calculator and it comes out to 3.63 times 10 to the 23 particles. On to the penultimate calculation. This is definitely only in the higher paper, so if you're not doing higher, don't worry about this. Limiting reactants, which is the reactant that's used up first, the one that stops the reaction. So again, we have a look at a question. I've got 14 grams of hydrogen, H2, reacting with 20 grams of oxygen, O2, to produce water. Calculate the limiting reactant. So again, you've got your trigger word, limiting reactant. These are the steps you follow. Number one, relative formula mass. Again, you've got atomic masses, so always work out your relative formula mass. I've got two H2, which means I've got two hydrogens, which got a mass of two, but two lots of them. So my formula mass for hydrogen is four. Oxygen, O2, I've just got two times 16, which gives me 32. So there's one mark for working that out. Your second mark, work out the moles. Mass divided by your formula mass. So my hydrogen, that's the mass in the question, 14 grams. You divide that by our formula mass of four, that comes out to 3.5 moles. Oxygen, 20 grams, tells you in the question, divided by our 32, our formula mass, gives me 0.63. Nice and simply for your third mark, your limiting reactant is the smallest value, which in this case is oxygen. And then the final different calculation in this video is stoichiometry, where you use masses of reactants to balance equations. So again, if we have a look at an example, in a chemical reaction, 72 grams of magnesium was reacted with 48 grams of oxygen to produce 120 grams of magnesium oxide. Use the information to write the balanced equation. Now, I could balance that, I could work out that it's 2mg plus O2 goes to 2mgO. However, you'll see that there's no marks given for that because the question states you must show you're working to gain the marks. So you can't just balance it. So we have to start by working out the moles again. And to do that, you've guessed it, the relative formula mass. So we work that out for each of our three. Magnesium is just magnesium. So that is 24. Oxygen, You've got two lots of O2, so that's 32. And then magnesium oxide, one magnesium, 24, one oxygen, 16. Add them together, you get 40. So to work out the moles then, it's the mass divided by MR. So 72 divided by 24, 48 divided by 32, and 120 divided by 40, which gives me three moles of magnesium, 1.5 moles of oxygen, and three moles of magnesium oxide. Now you can't put those numbers into the equation because you can't have 1.5. So what we have to do is divide by the smallest again. So the smallest number is 1.5, three divided by 1.5, 1.5 divided by 1.5, and three divided by 1.5 gives me a ratio of two to one to two. That's gonna get you your third mark out of four. And then finally, we add that to the equation. So I have two mg plus 102, which we just don't write in, plus two mgo. And that's my fourth mark if it was out of four. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel. You can check out the latest video 
and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.